Good morning. This is Bill Kennick, and uh, I'm doing the first video uh, I've done for about a year. And the uh, occasion is um, the entrance of Pluto into Aquarius. Uh, this is astrology, of course the sign of Aquarius uh, and, and uh, Pluto uh, this this today is the January 19th the year of 2024 and uh, Pluto should be entering Aquarius for the second time about tomorrow about January 20th now it had entered Aquarius last spring and then retrograded into Capricorn where right now it is like a 2959 uh, or 2955. Let's see, we actually have a, a horoscope up here uh, which delineates uh, delineates where Pluto is. Now, uh, just as a side and a side, I had a great deal of uh, trouble trying to decide whether my picture or the horoscope was more important. Uh, my picture, of course, being me and uh, my, the horoscope being tr merely transitory. Uh, but uh, just f because I couldn't see it otherwise, I, I made it bigger and me smaller. And uh, since I don't do much difference, see once in a while I should take off my glasses. I learned that from a, uh, another webcaster. He, puts his glasses on once in a while, and then he takes them off, and he looks up. He must be looking at a screen above him. He's, you know, quite accomplished at this, whereas I am a strict amateur. However, um, what I have to say is probably of some importance. Um, well, at least I, I think so. Now, so what I did is I calculated a chart about five minutes ago. And then I saved it as TTV show. So I think in order to do this, uh, make this tape, which will be put on YouTube uh, later, as soon as I figure this out. But uh, I think right now I need to have a bigger screen. So as you see me, I'm gonna be looking down at the screen probably more than at the camera, because you're not really out there yet. And um, what I notice is that um, we have 21 of Pisces rising. This was a few minutes ago, but it was just like the time of the horary. But what we're mainly interested in, if for starters, is Pluto, which is in 29 and uh, 29.57. Let's see. 29.57. And within the next day or two, it will be entering Aquarius. Now, here, well, the interesting point is that the Sun is right now is in 2902 of Capricorn, so that the two will be entering Aquarius together. Now, you know, if you read some commentaries, you think they're marching in, you know, side by side like like twins. Uh, they're not really there. The, the the ingress, uh, as they call, well. The entering into Aquarius will be, uh, you know, within six hours of each other. And still, that's, that counts. You know, that counts for something. If it was the exact split second, that would count even more. But uh, that's, uh, it's, it's close. It, there are, it, the sun is a big, powerful planet with a wide orb, and Pluto is, um, well, I'll tell you. You know, the astronomers got uppity uh, after Clyde Tombaugh died, and they demoted um, Pluto to being a minor planet. Yeah. Now, uh, now, Pluto is about the size of the asteroid Ceres. And, you know, Ceres got uh, promoted upwards at the same time because they're about the same size. And, uh, you know, Ceres, the... Uh, the asteroid uh, goddess of grain and gathering and so on. 
uh, got promoted upward. But these are all, this is what earthly astronomers do. Um, of course, astronomers don't, you know, it would be almost none would acknowledge that the false pseudoscience of astrology would have any meaning. There may be one or two somewhere that's more open-minded, but professionally, it would be you know professional death to to an astronomer that wanted to keep a job at, at some university to, to say he he did horoscopes. Uh, now, uh, back in the time of Kepler, of course, this was a totally different story, but today it's not fashionable or it's considered unscientific. You know, which. You know, for what it's worth, I mean, it's not science in the way that science is described today, uh, astrology. But, uh, you know, that's an argument for another time. I, I remember uh, Robert Hand told me personally one time that he says, well, uh, that's science. You know, science is good. You know, But he says, but don't confuse... Uh, Science is not necessarily truth. In other words, don't confuse what truth is with what science is. I mean, science is, uh, you know, mostly true, of course, you know. Uh, but truth is, uh, uh, I think he, uh, he, the gentleman implied that truth was something bigger, which involved, uh, you know, bigger questions. Uh, like, for example, of God, the question of God. Well, uh, the question of science, depending on how you define God or you know how you operationally meant to discover what what that was, uh, God is a uh, question of God is is a question of truth, but uh, science does not make much of a headway into uh, explaining much about God or uh, his truth. Uh, the, uh, and, yeah, so on and so forth. Uh, but anyway, so we have astrology, which is a kind of a tinkering. I mean, you know, I, I'm not trying to equate the question of astrology with the question of God. God is a much bigger thing. But uh, uh, what we do in astrology is try to tinker with, uh, we make a map of the sky we flatten the sky out onto a specific uh, flat sheet and uh, that's well th that's kind of arbitrary I and mean, it has some some basis in observation and so on but uh, there are other ways you can flatten that you know if how many ways can you slice an orange you know exactly in half you know about Quite a few, a million ways maybe. <laughs> you can slice it this way or that way or sideways, and each way would uh, would uh, if uh, you took took the planets from the sky at that time and projected it down, it, each way would have a slightly different uh, configuration. You know, the moon and the sun might be square if you slice it one way, and they might be conjunct if you slice it another way. Now, the astrologer Jandro had thought about that some, and he he came up with the idea of field planes of the different planets. And it, when John Doe was thinking of these things in, you know, 1920, 1929, you know, early 20s, I mean, he was a, an absolute genius, and he, he had some... Um, he had some electrical engineering in his uh, background also. Um, but anyway, he took you know science very seriously, and he he realized that you could um, you know the ecliptic has something to do with the where the the way the sun travels as seen from the Earth. But uh, you know if you had uh, and that's the way we normally uh, most of you know most uh, ninety nine percent of us astrologers flatten it down the ecliptic. But technically, we could make a circle where you know, Mercury was, and we could flatten it down into the Mercury plane, which John Doe said you, you could do. And if you did that, uh, presumably your, uh, your reading would have more to do with the mind and thinking and thoughts and travel, Mercury kind of things. 
Whereas if you flatten it down into the field plane of Venus, uh, then, you know, that presumably would tell you more about your love life and, and so on. Uh, so what's the point? The point is, in astrology, we fiddle with things like that. And uh, now it used to be that uh, some very good astrologers um, were not very good at math at all. And I know when I when I taught astrology 50 years ago, we, we didn't have computers. So I attempted to teach people how to do or calculate a horoscope. And, uh, you know, we did. But uh, now with the advent of computers, it's, it's a lot easier. And uh, probably the mathematical sophistication of the astrologers is much less. Uh, so if there would happen to be uh, something came out of the computer that was like totally wrong, like you were born at noon, but there the sun is on the fourth house cusp, which means you made a terrible mistake by about 12 hours in your calculations. But uh, most, uh, you know, a lot, some astrologers that use these canned horoscopes may not even realize that, you know, that, uh, oh, they were, uh, you know, the, the chart was wrong. And they'll proceed to read it and, Maybe get the right answer because the other aspect of uh, astrology is uh, that we have great intuitions, and some of the greatest astrologers. You know, I mean, if you an astrologer says, "Oh yeah, you know, so and so astrologer was very psychic," see? and uh, I heard Al Morrison say that about some. Famous astrologer, I, I don't know if it was Ev Evangeline Adams or somebody, but uh, not, you know, so don't, but somebody of that era, but he said, oh yeah, she was t t tremendously psychic, which is kind of a put down um, from one astrologer to the other, because that means she wasn't really reading the chart at all. She was just pulling in the, the visions from her, uh, psychic powers and technically uh, an astrologer is supposed to you know, not, not pull that stuff in from the ether you know he's supposed to calculate the chart and go by the rules now on this particular uh, horoscope uh, here which I calculated uh, at what 1009 now, as we speak, it's 1028, but anyway, this, this chart was made for 1009, and I believe the question was, um, you know, when is World War III going to start, <laughs> you know? And uh, my, uh, the whole point of this, me doing this, uh, this YouTube was that I'm predicting that, uh, you know, I mean, it would be, uh, I'm predicting that World War III will start tomorrow. Or maybe the day after, but you know, sometime real soon. And in a way, you could you could say that. Well, we're uh, now. Why am I doing that? Is just an opportunistic uh, chance, uh, you know, really to to say, yeah, I called it, you know, I or like I called the crash before, you know, the, the day before it happened, and, and so on. It's it's, it's a sort of an ego trip, but nevertheless. Um, uh, assuming I ever get it on YouTube, it's going to be interesting. Okay, Pluto, but the, the premise is that uh, things are going to change a great deal. Now, you know, you don't really have to be an astrological genius to look at the news and say, look, uh, there, there's uh, three or four wars in the Middle East all starting at the same time. Okay. Uh, like what? Well, you got Israel slaughtering the Palestinians. You got uh, Iran shooting rockets at Pakistan. You got Pakistan shooting rockets at Iran. You got the United States shooting rockets at the Houthis, and the Houthis uh, shooting, you know, b bordering, uh, uh, shipping in the Red Sea. So you got a war there, and you got Hezbollah in Lebanon just waiting, you know, and having minor skirmishes at this time with the 
with Israel, and you have um, Iraq shooting at the United States um, occupiers, and uh, the United States shooting back on uh, what they call uh, po police missions. And, uh, you know, that's just in the Mideast. Then you have Ukraine uh, and the Russians having a major war there. I mean, you know, there's ten, ten times more people are dying in Ukraine than in, than in the Near East. But, you know, the Near East, uh, Biden, uh, you know, President Joseph Biden, he's uh, the president of the United States, said he didn't want to go into Ukraine. This was about a year, uh, almost two years ago, he said, because that would start World War Three, And he was, you know, kind of, he kind of understood that point, you know. But so he's basically waited about uh, two years, and we're going to start World War Three now at our at our own uh, sense of timing and, and, and at our own convenience, you might say. So uh, that's, uh, that's what this is all about. World War III, uh, now what, what does that mean to us in the United States? I, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if I should go out and you know, buy more canned goods uh, because things are going to get tough later. Or, I, I don't know, you know, or head out to the sticks. Well, I'm in the sticks, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in Alliance, Ohio, which is not necessarily the first target, uh, the first nuclear target uh, of the enemy, but uh, well, we'll see. Anyhow, um, all right, so uh, this is Bill Kinnick. Uh, Everything I said, I meant, more or less, you know, except the, this part about the sticks. I was I had slightly tongue-in-cheek on that, in case the uh, authorities here come to get me. Um, maybe we'll uh, talk more some other time. Uh, thank you.